I'm Courtney. We're a family of five trying to grow as much of our own food as we can, and we raise chickens. Our kids wanted to name our little backyard farm, so we did. It's called Heart Pine Farms. It's a hot day in August, and we're out here harvesting melons. So we're going to give you a couple of tips on how to know when your melons are ready for harvesting. Visual signs you're going to look for are number one color. Tell that it's not ready because it's green. The whole thing is very green. These are ready because they've turned a golden color. You can see the webbing on them very well too. Um, another visual sign is the stem. This one right here, the stem popped right off of it. You can see this one's probably even overdone because it's cracked so much where the stem, around where the stem was. This one, there's a good one right here. You can see it starts to crack around where the stem is. And then when you go to pick it, it'll easily just pop right off like that. And then there's a dip right here where the stem used to be. Number one, color, it's golden. Number two, the cracking around the stem. Number three, the stem just pops right off and then it leaves this little divot right here. So the problem with melons, unlike tomatoes, when you, after you harvest them, they're not gonna ripen anymore. It is what it is when you harvest it. So um, it's important just to watch for all of these hints. It just smells so sweet and so good. There's a good one right there. This one went too far, unfortunately. So we harvested one earlier that ants did get to and we cut it open and it was just a surface thing. So we were able to eat the rest of the melon. It was just fine. But this right here is obviously an issue. So we're not gonna eat that one because it just got too overdone and cracked right there. This one right here though, this one is gonna be fine. It cracked a little bit where the stem was and this is gonna be a good one too. So let's see if we have any others in here that are gonna be good. I know we have some that have gone way too far. Like this one is soft, so we're not gonna take that one. This one right here is good. The stem popped right off. See, that's a good one. getting some good ones. There are a few tips on growing melons that we can share um, through our experiences growing them at home. We're planting organic divergent melons. They're a cross between cantaloupe and gallia melons, which are more like honeydew. They're very sweet. We chose these because they're highly disease resistant, which we need because it gets very hot and humid where we live. Compost in just recently, and we also turned over our cover crops about six weeks ago. We plant these seeds about a half an inch deep. Just like this, one about right here, another one about right here. Plant one right here. And we're gonna plant another one right here. Go over to the other side. There. Okay, we're just gonna give the soil a good watering here, and we'll keep the soil consistently moist. For germination. Melons need the soil to be at least 70 degrees in order to germinate and grow well. Compost in the soil. We actually don't fertilize. We hardly ever fertilize. Um, we just add compost when we plant the seeds. Before we plant, we work a good layer of compost into the surface of the bed. And after they germinate, we mulch really well. We use pine straw here. That helps that helps the soil retain moisture. So we actually didn't end up having to water our melon plants that much throughout the summer. They stayed pretty moist. Um, you don't want them to get too soggy because then they're susceptible to disease. 
Um, we just check them to make sure the soil never dried out. And a good way to do that is to stick your finger down into the soil, up to your knuckle there. And if it comes out and there is soil stuck to your finger, then it, it's good. There's not too much water, and if it's dry, you most likely won't have any soil sticking to your finger. So basically they need moist but not waterlogged soil, so kind of like a wrung out sponge. We try to water at the base of the vine to avoid splashing water on the leaves to help reduce the risk of disease. We also try to back off on watering the plants when it gets to be about a week or two away from harvesting to help avoid the cracking of the fruit. Of course, we can't control the rain though, and we had a rainy period before harvesting. We still ended up with plenty of perfectly sweet melons though. When the melons started forming, we put these cradles underneath them, like this, so that they're kind of sitting on top of the dirt. They just stick right down into the soil like that, and that helps prevent rot. Because in the past, you know, we've just had melons sitting here and one side of them rots, which is really unfortunate. And this, this completely prevented that. People grow melons lots of different ways, and you'll find out what works best for your space and climate. We plant six plants in our 4 by 8 raised bed because we usually end up losing a couple of plants for different reasons. We can always thin the plants back, so we plant a couple of extra every time. We don't trellis our melons because we have really hot summers here and sometimes it ends up being really dry. The vining plants provide shade to the soil, helping it retain moisture. The compost we add to the soil also helps hold in moisture along with the layer of mulch that we put on top. We do trim the vines back so they don't take over the space around the raised bed and the plants always seem to do just fine. We always end up with just the right amount of melons for our family to enjoy fresh and also some to give to friends and family. As far as pests go, we keep track of the crops we plant in each bed to make sure we rotate. We avoid planting melons in beds we previously grew plants from the same family like squash and cucumbers for at least two years, which helps avoid overwintering pests. We have had issues with voles going after our melons before and hardware cloth works to deter them. There are also mesh wire bags that fit around the melons that work well. This year we just happened to get really lucky and we didn't have to deal with voles. Not all melons are ready to pick at the same time, and some of ours are actually still green. But some of them got away from us and ended up being overripe. The best tip we have leading up to harvest time is to keep an eye on them because they do ripen very quickly. If you've never grown melons at home before, we hope you'll give it a try because like all homegrown food, the flavor is so amazing compared to store-bought melons. It's also so satisfying to grow your own. 